Hello and welcome to this tutorial in which I want to show you the user interface of the program FacePager and which possibilities it offers you to automatically collect data. FacePager is programmed to help you assembling datasets with just a few clicks via APIs as well as web scraping. Before getting started, it's helpful to get to know the functions each of the five different windows provide. But first, let's have a look at the menu bar in the topmost row. Here we find the basic functions you need or might need for your data collection. Most important, you need to create a database where the results will be listed. You create one by clicking on the button New Database. Now a window opens up where the directory can be chosen. If you already have a database in which you'd like to work in, you can also use the button Open Database. By clicking the button Export Data, you are able to export your data after the collection. This requires to choose your designated directory again, where your dataset will be saved as a CSV file. Beside this, you see the button Add Notes. Adding seed notes is necessary for the data collection because the program needs a starting point to be able to request the data. I am using the Facebook sites of two British daily newspapers as example and enter their Facebook IDs, which are marked by the Add symbol at the beginning. You are also able to delete notes if you put some wrong notes or just want to clear your database. Then you get the opportunity to pick a preset, but I'll get into the explanation of these later. By clicking on APIs, you'll find some instructions for the usage and limitations of the typically used APIs and links to the API provider's documentations. If you need help, you find some links by clicking on the Help button to the Getting Started section for FacePager usage at the GitHub Wiki or to the FacePager user group on Facebook, which provides a platform for exchange between users but you'll also find these links in the video description box. Well, if you want to start your data collection, you now have the opportunity to choose from the modules in the Query Setup window. The generic module offers the most options and gives you full control over all settings, for example for web scraping or if you want to collect very specific data. If you're not familiar with APIs or web scraping yet, the presets are a good starting point. As you can see, some presets are already available after installing FacePager. And in the preset window, you also get the opportunity to save your own setting as a new preset, so you always have access to recent settings. To show you an example, I'm going to collect the general information from the two Facebook sites I set as seed notes. In order to do so, I pick the preset listed below Facebook. Information about pages. When I click on this preset, some information appear for example about the adjusted parameters, and now I apply the preset which suits my needs. As you can see now, the base path is already set, so the program has the required information of which API it should request the data you want to fetch. In the resource field, you see the placeholder page ID. Placeholders are a central concept of FacePager as they are used to assemble the API requests. You can find more information about how to use them in the wiki. The placeholder page ID is automatically replaced by the object IDs you added as seed notes, which in this case are the IDs the new sites are related to on Facebook. Also, the parameter fields is already set, which decides over which information about the new site is requested at the API by using the keys, for example for the location of the newspaper or number of followers. Then you are able to set the maximum pages, which in this specific example is not necessary. You will need the setting, for example, when fetching posts, because the APIs deliver the posts not all at once, but rather in smaller chunks called pages. To get access to the data from the Facebook API, you have to log into Facebook. You can use your personal account for this, and once you've clicked through this access authorization, you get access and can start your data collection. But there are also some helpful options in the settings section, which you can set before starting your collection. With the first two settings, you can decide which nodes you want to collect data from. In this case, I could just select my two nodes. But if you have planned to collect large amounts of data from lots of nodes, this setting comes in handy because you can select all nodes at once and choose the node level matching the desired starting points. Now we select all of the seed nodes, but if you have already collected data like for example Facebook posts of your seed nodes, you possibly want to also fetch data about the comments using the child nodes as starting points, for which you need to increase the node level to 2. Another helpful option FacePager provides are the tooltips. If you need information about some of FacePager's settings, you can point on the specific setting and the tooltip will appear, as you can see. 
With this option, you can decide of how many threads you want to fetch data simultaneously and with the requests per minute, you can choose how many requests the program sends to the Facebook API per minute. But you need to be a little careful with increasing both at the same time, because you can easily reach the right limit, which is determined by the API. Also, you can decide how many errors can occur until the data collection is paused. And now that I started fetching my data, you can see that in the bottom right window, the status log, a protocol of the collection is written. It shows you how many new nodes are created, as well as information about occurring errors. As soon as the data collection is finished, you can see the details of your collected data by choosing one node in the nodes viewer, but you may need to expand the seed node first. In this case, you can see that an error occurred. To find the cause, it's helpful to have a closer look at the error message, which like any other collected information, appears in the upper right window, the data view. Here, the data is divided into key and value. The key is the field under which the content of the new site information is requested from the API, while the value is the specific information about, for example, the location of the company or the number of followers. Before saving your data set, you can modify the information listed in your data table. You can clear your column setup in the custom table column window and afterwards selecting only the required information and adding them to the dataset by clicking at column. In the wiki you'll find more information about the keys that can be used in the custom table setup. You now should find all the desired data in your notes view and can export it as a CSV file. When saving the data you can choose between the export modes all notes or selected notes. If you selected all your notes before, you can choose the mode selected notes to save them in their order of appearance in the data table. If you decide to save your data with the mode all notes, which makes the export much faster, the data will be saved in the order of their internal IDs. Thank you for watching and good luck with your first steps using FacePager. You can download FacePager at the FacePager releases page on GitHub. Further information and get started instructions are also available at the FacePager wiki on GitHub. If you have specific questions and are searching for help, you're welcome to join the FacePager user group on Facebook. And if you enjoyed the video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up.